Hello everybody. This is going to be a video on how to connect the spooky to the intelligent. The intelligent being the abbreviated name for intelligent plasma ball. And that's the way I refer to it quite a bit. Um, all you have to do is have a uh, cable set that has BNC's oops, on one end and on the other end just uh, phono plugs, RCA phono plugs. Uh, stereo cable. I buy these adapters so I end up getting a stereo cable um, left and right channel and I put a adapter on one end and now it will connect to the spooky. So that part should be extremely easy to do. Cables are, have been provided in the past with the intelligent uh, plasma ball. I may or may not continue that process because a lot of people aren't using the cables. So I could save myself a, a little bit of expense. All right, so I just plugged it in. I'm going to turn on the, the plasma ball and I'll show you the screen. So the plasma ball turned on. And I'm going to go in, and I'm not going to give you a close-up view of this, but I'm going to go in and set the mode to be simple. Just simple is just whatever frequency I dial in is the one it's going to run. And it is now in simple mode. And presently it has um, a frequency of 28,000 uh, uh, for the primary going into it internally, um, not from the spooky, but internally. And it has um, showman's resonance. So to run from a spooky, you can do things you could never do before because of the intelligence that the plasma ball has. Um, but if you want to stick with the old-fashioned technique of just using a separate function generator and just using the spooky software, um, you're welcome to it. Uh, what I have a tendency to do now is strictly use the intelligence in the plasma ball, but occasionally um, I, I can foresee, uh, it's a new product so I haven't done it yet, but I can foresee using the spooky um, to complement some of the things uh, that I'd like to get done because I've already got protocols written uh, for the spooky software. Regardless, it just plugs in like I've already showed you. So the first thing, and it, there's two switches, just like on the um, six inch basic plasma ball that's advertised or shown on the Aurora Sky website, same, same scheme. Uh, you've got uh, a primary channel, a secondary channel, you've got a primary channel switch and a secondary channel switch. When the toggle switches are in the down position, the plasma ball will run from the internal, the internal settings uh, and the program memory that's inside the Arduino inside this plasma ball case. If I start running it, um, right now it's running Showman's Residence of um, 7.83 uh, and it's as a secondary or the gating frequency and it's turning on and off you can see it flashing and it's running 28,000 as a primary if you want to just run the primary channel I'm, I didn't show this before I'm going to show it now I'm going to unplug the gating channel because I'm not taking any signal from the spooky yet if you want to run strictly the primary channel without gating, simply turn the toggle switch up on the gating channel with nothing loaded into it so it can't be driven by an external source and now it's only running the primary channel regardless of the fact that there is a secondary channel that's fully functional. It's been actually disconnected from the input driver so I'm just running the primary channel. So this is how you can run a single frequency from a protocol that you might have set up uh, on the Spooky and translate that protocol directly into uh, the plasma ball. You can do it either by reprogramming the memory inside the plasma ball 
or running a software program that's all set up to send a stream of frequencies to the primary channel. Either or, it's your choice. Very, very simple. If you want to run strictly from the Spokey, and I've only got one cable connected right now, I'm going to turn the switch up, and you didn't even see a change because the Spokey is running at 30,000 kilohertz. Very hard to see the difference between 30,000 and 20,000 or 28,000 on the uh, plasma ball. But I'm going to go back and turn the switch. Now it's come, it, it, it's getting its input from this red cable, which is connected to the first channel on the Spooky. And I'm going to change the frequency on the Spooky and watch what happens when I got to get there first to the frequency part. Watch what happens when I change the frequency uh, going in. Whoops. It's it stopped because uh, I have a timer on here of only uh, uh, 110 seconds. So so regardless, I just started it back up. I should say, but okay. So I'm changing the frequency now, and look at the difference on the uh, plasma ball as I go through various frequencies. Right now, I'm down to six kilohertz. And I'm going 7, 8, 9, 10. I can't go any lower than 6 kilohertz with the present um, duty cycle of 20 hertz. I mean, 20, yeah, 20%. 20 I'm going to change that duty cycle as recommended in the sheet that I've given you. Saying that if you're going to come from the smoky, set all the duty cycles to 10%. And I just did that. Now I'm going to go back up to the top frequency. And I'm going to dial down. I'm at 7 kilohertz. I'm at 5 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz. And it's probably getting hard to see, but you can still see it even in the daylight uh, coming in from the window. You start getting lower than a kilohertz, and it gets really hard to see because it's getting weaker. But we'll see how low we can actually go um, next I'm at 900 cycles per second. I can still see it here. Can you still see it? In the, yeah, you can still see it. You can still see it. If I hit the, uh, yeah, I just hit the off and I just hit the on. You can still see it. It's very faint. I'm down to 500 kilohertz. Um, I wouldn't recommend going much lower than that, but you can uh, directly modulating channel one. When you want to run low frequencies, I would suggest that you do what I'm going to show you right now. Um, I'm going to dial this back up to the magic number of 28,000. Coming in from the Spokey, 28,000 at 10%. Got to go to channel 2. Okay, I just switched to channel 2. I'm going to plug in channel 2. Channel 2 is now plugging in. And I presently have channel 2 pulsing at Shulman's Resonance from the Spokey 2. But I can actually dial it down to anything I want. And if we go to next. Channel 2 frequency and I'm dialing it slower you can see it pulsing slower and slower and slower and slower what am I at now I'm at 1.83 Hertz I'm at 0.83 Hertz and I can dial anything I want including those low frequencies this is a way to run low frequencies on the plasma ball pick a health frequency like 28,000 kilohertz um, and then modulate it with channel 2 and you can run extremely low frequencies and there's something else about using gating and running uh, using gating when the plasma ball switches its intensity um, on and off like with a smack that is like a harder hit to your body than when it just gradually shifts it into a new frequency on and off. But when it smacks you on and off, um, 
it's sort of like a vibrator. It's sort of like a vibrator, and I'll give you an analogy, like a vibrator turned up high versus turned up way, way, way low. When you have a vibrator in your hand, whatever kind you might have, and you turn it up high, and you're holding it in your hand, your hand shakes a lot. Uh, you turn it down, it shakes just a little bit. But you feel the intensity a lot better when, of course, the vibrator is up high. And that's what sort of like what gating does. It turns that 28,000 kilohertz on and off with a smack. And it's a relatively powerful uh, signal. Not relatively, it's a powerful signal. This can be detected with my, um, uh, my electric field meter minimally at 10 feet away. Not very strong at 10 feet, very, very weak, but it can be detected. Um, when you're like a foot away, it just smashes the meter, so I, I can't use the meter. Uh, about three to five feet away, uh, the meter responds very nicely, going full scale, but without slamming. There's not much else to tell you, uh, so this is going to be a relatively short video, uh, 11 minutes, might, might make 12. Um, that's it. Run your protocols. Follow the directions, keep your duty cycle to 10%, and it's just a matter of switches. And you've learned one new thing, that if you only want to run the primary signal from within the spooky, in fact, I'll unplug, nothing coming in, turn the switches down, turn, it, turn the unit on, that's now running only the primary channel, because I've got the secondary channel turned off. Uh, and there's nothing coming in, so it's effectively turned off. It's saying, I want to see what's coming in on this, this um, input right here, and nothing's coming in on the RCA input. And now I turned it down to the uh, internal, so now it's running both channels. Okay, so that's my little uh, blurb on using a spooky. Use it like you used to use it with the 6-inch uh, uh, normal ball. Um, it's an extra feature and you can combine you just saw me combine uh, different things going on I had both running um, in fact maybe I should just do that real quick just to make sure everybody understands I'm going to replug this in I'm going to use the gating from the internal uh, uh, frequency generator inside the Arduino and I'm going to run the external coming in from the spooky so this and I can just do the reverse obviously also so right now I have a signal coming in from the spooky in channel 1 and I'm turning that signal on and off from the internals of this um, uh, frequency generator inside the plasma ball at the rate of 7.83 at Shulman's residence one thing nice about the spooky it offers real-time dial you can dial in the frequency and watch things change. Um, that's nice. Can't do that with this. You have to actually load the frequency into a memory spot. That could be a nice tool, too, uh, to find out how different frequencies react. You could use a spooky, test them out, and then you could program them into the plasma ball. Okay, that winds this 14-minute uh, video up. I meant to be short. Um, was more like a normal video. Everybody have yourself a nice day and I will publish this in uh, an hour or so.